feel like you should testify, and I tell you that. Okay. Now, Pastor, that's a long way and a long way to get around to the point that you've been fully advised by both myself and Mr. Peel concerning your right to testify and the pitfalls that testimony uh, could potentially possess. And one of those things is that we've discussed there's no such thing as the Fifth Amendment once you decide to whether either take the witness stand or not. If you choose to take the witness stand, you don't get to pick and choose the questions you answer. You're required to answer all questions propounded that the court uh, instructs you to answer from both the prosecutor or from both your lawyers as well as the state lawyers. You understand that? And then they're, they're uh, allowed to go into your prior record with certain prohibitions that the court would enforce. I'm not concerned about that from that standpoint. But uh, you understand that I told you, uh, you've got a very uh, seasoned and, and uh, experienced prosecutor over here that uh, is very adept at asking questions of people accused of criminal offenses. You, I'll explain that to you, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Bottom line, this is your case. It's not our case. We have given you advice as to what we think. Well, our advice is not really important at this point in time. The only question is right now, do you wish to take the stand in your defense? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, understanding all the, all the uh, uh, caveats that I've explained to you here in open court, you understanding everything about it, you're telling this court that you wish to testify and that you wish for me to call you as a witness when the jury comes back into this court. Because that's all I have. All right, thank you, Mr. Um, Hernandez. It seems to me like you understand your um, attorney's explanation, correct? You understand that when you do take the stand, you will be treated like any other witness. You will be subject to cross examination and the whole, uh, everything else. You understand that? Yes. And you, knowing all that, you want to testify. Is that right? Yes. All right. Okay. Let's go to the jury. Good. How do you want to do it as far as? We had to take the stand before we bring jury in. Oh, that's correct. He's got the chance. That's correct. Hold on one second. All right, Joe. All right. Come on. All right. Let's go to the jury. Let's go to the jury. I just doesn't get enough ammo. I'm going to have a seat.
Chairman, just on the Mr. Call and Mr. Hayes. Nestor Hernandez. <clears throat> Nestor, how old person are you? 31. 31 years old? Yes, sir. Okay. And can you tell this jury where you were born? United States. Okay, where, what city? Dallas, Texas. Okay, and where were you raised? Dallas, Texas. Okay. Did you uh, go to school here in the Dallas area? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, did you attend high school here for at least a time in the Dallas area? Yes, sir. And what high school was that? WTY High School. <clears throat> Nestor, I'm having a little bit of trouble here, Neil. I want you to speak up because I want the jury to make sure they hear everything you have to say. Uh, you didn't complete high school, isn't that correct? No, sir. Okay. Uh, once you got out, once you quit attending high school, could you give the jury an idea of what you've done for the last 15 years or so of your life? Well, uh, I was in prison and working. Now we're gonna cover that. Uh, you actually, and it's not something we're here to hide from. You're, te you're here to tell this jury and admit that you've been in the penitentiary on two separate cases. Is that right? Yes, sir. And uh, in that regard, the uh, the first time you went, what year was that? 2012. Okay, and what did you go to prison for in 2012? Simple robbery. Okay, and uh, how long were you in prison then? Two years. Now, after uh, you got out of that, did there come a time when you were convicted of another robbery that involved uh, Selena Bellator? Yes, sir. Okay, so the both of you were accused of being a part of a, of a robbery and subsequently were sentenced to how much time in prison at that time? Uh, eight years. <clears throat> All right. And uh, what year was it that you got out of prison? Two, 2021. And do uh, you remember what month it was? October. So in October of 2021, you were placed on parole. How much of your eight-year sentence have you served? Uh, almost seven years. Okay, so you were on parole for basically another year after that? Yes, sir. Now, once you got out of uh, the penitentiary the, the uh, second time, uh, Selena had gotten released earlier than you, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell the jury, if you would, from the time that you got released in October of 2021, and even before that, when you weren't in prison, could you tell the jury what kind of work it was that you did? Uh, well, when, when I got out, yes, sir. Yeah, I was working uh, at a bag and film company. Uh, I was a material handler, and I drove forklifts at the at the warehouse. Okay, and what kind of warehouse was it? What kind of work were they? What was it that they were making there? Trash bags. We made trash bags. Plastic trash bags? Yes, sir. And you were responsible for funneling the materials in the machines that would yes, end up spitting those trash bags out, correct? Yes, sir. The, the trains uh, come with the material, and I hook it up and to the other machines, and I, you know, I do that whole little process, uh, making sure the machines get the material they need to make the bags. Okay. <coughs> and, you had, and were you still working at that job, actually, on the day that this uh, situation occurred? Yes, sir. Were you, in fact, required or, or supposed to go to work that afternoon or that early evening? Yes, sir. Yeah, I was supposed to be at work at uh, 8 p.m. Okay, what, were you, what hours were you working there uh, during this period of time? 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. <clears throat> I kind of scooted over your early, your early uh, background pretty quick. Let me just ask you, uh, what do you have here in the Dallas area for family? Uh, I got three other brothers, uh, a mom, a mom. Uh, my aunt, nieces. Okay, you've got okay. quite an extended family, correct? Yes, sir. Right. But in, uh, and your father, where is he now? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know my father. No. Now, Mister, uh, I want to talk a little bit about it. Could you tell this jury? Would you describe for them how you and Selena rekindled your your uh, romance or your relationship uh, after you were released in prison in October of twenty one? Uh. <clears throat> well, she uh, texted me on Facebook, uh, 
to be honest, like an order. And she wanted to know where I was, uh, where I was living at. She was like, where do you live at? And I was like, uh, and so, uh, about, about, like about a month, month and a half, I, I finally, uh, I made up with her. I, I told her. I didn't show her where I lived, but I showed her it was a DMV. I gave her that address. I told her to meet me there. And that's where. Okay, were you were you interested in rekindling this relationship? Or you sound like you were somewhat hesitant once you got released? No, I was I was hesitant. <clears throat> what was the reason why you were hesitant? Uh, because she was she wasn't there when, whenever she got out. She 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 got out. You know what I'm saying? She she wrote me a couple times and you know, put money there. A little bit there, but she, she disappeared. So. And subsequent to all that, you, you guys did end up getting back together, correct? Right? Yes, sir. And was that relationship uh, somewhat volatile, or was it peaceful? And would you describe it as peaceful and loving, or would you describe it as patches of peaceful loving and patches of violence? Uh, it wasn't a good relationship. It, it was a rocky relationship. It was. And then sometime in the uh, uh, early part of 2022, you found out that she was pregnant, correct? Yes, sir. Can you tell the jury what your thoughts were when you found out that uh, she was pregnant? Uh, I, I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to have uh, I've only been out three, three months. And I was still looking for work at that time, I was, and I was on house arrest. So, uh, okay, explain I mean, that for me, if you would. You said you were on house arrest. What does that mean? Uh, it means uh, I can't come out of the house. Okay, so when you got out of the penitentiary, you were placed on parole, put on house arrest, which means that unless you were working, you were not, you were not really even allowed to leave your home, correct? No, sir. And then you, uh, when you said no, I mean, is that, was that, is that a correct statement? Uh, yeah, yeah, like I, I couldn't. You, you had to wait to get a job before you Yes, sir, I had to wait to get a job to be able to leave the house. Okay. And you subsequently did that and got a job and, and continued to work, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, the... <coughs> In the months that she was pregnant, leading up to the actual her uh, giving birth to your child, uh, did things stay rocky throughout that period? Uh, yes, they they did. Uh, she wouldn't let me go to no appointments. Uh, I would want to go. I'd tell her she she would say yes, and then at, at the last minute she would block her number. And uh, I even drove to her dad's car lot and uh, asked her sister. I was like, "Hey, is she here? She, I was supposed to take her to the uh, doctor's appointment." She was. Uh, she, she told her, "No, you can call her if you want. She's not here." And so I told her I couldn't call her because she blocked me. So and she was like, "Well, I don't know about no appointment." So I mean, did you believe that she was faithful to you during this period of time? Uh, no, sir. I'm sorry. No, sir. She she wasn't. I, I know for a fact she wasn't. And so <laughs> this relationship continued up until October 2022. <clears throat> Let's talk about the days leading up to uh, her giving birth. Were you, was it, did it stay rocky even up to this point in time when she was about to have a baby? Um, yes, yeah, she, yes, yeah, it did, it did. I mean, uh, if you could, Nestor, explain if you, the best way you can to try to get this tree to understand exactly what kind of relationship y'all were having. Uh, it was just like, like I said, like, even on, on, the, on the day before, on the, I was supposed to, uh, when her water broke, I was gonna take her uh, to the hospital. I was like, come on, I'm gonna take her to the hospital. And uh, she was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? And so we came outside, she got her back out. We went to the back and I got my trust and then she got in, her, in the car. And then I don't know what she's like, hey, uh, I don't want you to take me. And I was like, what? She was like, I don't want you to take me. And I was like, why not? You know what I'm saying? She was like, I just don't, I don't want you to take me. <clears throat> so we got into an argument. I was, I, I, I had a red polo shirt. I threw, the, I threw the shirt at her. She was sitting inside of her car, and uh, she had a glass cup. She she stepped out and she started shit. I was like, watch out! She threw it, hit me right here. <clears throat> she hit me my arm, and I was like, man. I started telling her like, man. I was like, I don't I don't get you. Like, I really don't understand you. Like, there's women out there that would want their dads, their, their baby's dads, to actually be there for the appointments and take them to the to the hospital, and you know what I'm saying, and be there for them. You know what I'm saying? You don't let me do that. I, I just don't understand you. I don't get you. And I hopped in my truck, and uh, I peeled out. I peeled out. I, I took off. I was, I was, I was mad. I took off, and uh, and this is uh, the grow, the grow side area, 
And so I drove, I was driving towards Carrollton and I got to like about Market Center or Medical, Medical Center around that area. And she called me and she was like, hey, are you gonna take me or not? So I was like, you want me to take you or not? She's like, yeah, okay. She's like, hurry up, come, come pick me up. I need you to come take me. So I was like, I just want right. to ask you a couple other questions. That, uh, again, we're not, we're not trying to hide anything from the jury. Uh, you uh, admit that you used methamphetamine this time, did you not? Uh, yeah, that Thursday. Uh, and, uh, you drank, and you drank? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> and you also were in possession of a firearm? Uh, yes, sir. Tell me, explain and talk to the jury about that. Why Why was it that you would have had a firearm knowing that as a convicted felon, you're not supposed to have it? Uh, well, I, I, I'm assuming y'all seen the video where uh, I was getting arrested when I was child care trying to fix my truck. Uh, the windows, my back window was broken. Uh, somebody kept vandalizing my truck. Someone broke the side window and then the back window and then uh, my hey, tire. Andrew, you lost me here a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to. You're referring to this particular situation or some other situation? It's, it was it was the uh, on on that video okay. uh, where I was getting arrested. Like somebody kept vandalizing my truck. I don't, I don't know who who it was, but it was it was just it cost money. Yeah. Uh, but you you had been in possession for a firearm for a while leading up to into October, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Now on the day before. Had there been some discussion between you and Selena regarding that particular firearm and, and whether or not she was going to put your name on the birth certificate as the father of this child? Yes, sir. So tell, explain to the jury what it was that she told you in that regard. Regarding what the detective told us? What Selena told him. She's already testified to it, aren't she? She, she testified yesterday. I'm not offered for the truth, though. She already, she already admitted to the statement, so it's not being offered for the truth. Just as the, uh, the uh, mindset that it put him on, <coughs> hearing what she stated in court was the truth regarding her statement. My recollection may be wrong, Jim, but I believe that she denied, denied that statement. No, she said that she, I'll ask him, I'll, I'll specifically ask him, I mean, Drew will recall it. I mean, if we, if we need to, I'll ask that we take a break and have a court report and read that back. Conversation between you and Selena regarding her her telling her admitting or putting your name on the birth certificate. Right? Yes, sir. And how did that tie you into this, to this particular firearm? Uh, she wanted me to get rid of the pistol. Uh, uh, we were at Dick, we were in the parking lot at Dickie's. Uh, she wanted to baked potato before I took it to the hospital. She was hungry, and uh, she, uh, I was like, "Hey, are you going to give my last name?" And she was like. I don't know, maybe, I still want to give him a, uh, my dad's last name. And I was like, why you want to give me your dad's last name? I said, man, you're supposed to have my last name. And she was like, well, get rid of the pistol. You know what I'm saying? If you get rid of the pistol, I'll do it. And I was like, bet. And she was like, for real? And I was like, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I really don't need it. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I don't need it. And she was like, okay. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, uh, well, throw it. And I was like, I was like, why throw it when I could just sell it? You know what I'm saying? I was like, I could just get rid of it. And she was like, are you real? I was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, you watch. And uh, I keep the gun and uh, a box of buddies with this nigga in, in the truck. And uh, I was like, look, she had she a, a bag. And so I placed it in the bag. I was like, look, I don't need it. I, 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 placed, it, I placed it in her bag. She got a makeup bag. I was like, look, I don't need it. I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? And I said, well, as soon as I get it sold, I'm going to set it. And she was like, okay. And after that, I took it to uh, uh, Methodist Hospital. So at that point in time, when you had the conversations before going to the hospital, uh, the day before the birth, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, it was, you, she basically gave you the ultimatum either get rid of the gun or your name's not going to be attached to your child. Yes, sir. Now, in all honesty, Esther, did you have some questions in your mind as to whether that baby was in fact yours? Uh, I have. I, I asked her uh, earlier for a DNA test. Her parents uh, got upset with me. Uh, Okay, but leading into that particular day now, uh, you uh, so you're telling this jury that when you had the conversation with her the day before she gave birth, that as a show of your good faith, you took that act, you took the gun, placed it into her one of the bags that she was going to take with her into the hospital. Uh, 
it, it wasn't in the bag that I thought she was going to. She had an overnight bag, and then she had her makeup bag. I placed her in the makeup bag. Okay. Now, did you carry that gun into the hospital that next day, or was it carried into the hospital in her baggage with her? Uh, I, I carried both bags. Okay. Uh, I could shoot. You know what I'm saying? We, we walked in, but I did. I did. I did carry both bags. She told me to grab the bags, okay. and I grabbed the bags. And did you leave that bag? Did, was the gun still in that bag when you left the day before she gave birth? Yes, sir. Okay. So the day that you came back into the hospital, where we've seen it on the videotape, you walking into the hospital, you have something in your hand, but that's a, a, a can of beer. Is that correct? Yes, sir. What kind of beer was it? Do you recall? Steel Reserve. I'm sorry? Steel Reserve. Okay. And we've seen your talk screen. It says you didn't really have any alcohol concentration, so you really had any opportunity to to really drink at that point in time, had you? Yes, sir. <coughs> so when you, let's talk about it. So you, the, the day before, when you took her to the hospital, you carried the bags in, and one of those bags had, I mean, you put the gun there, so you knew that that bag was there. And you were doing it to make her happy so y'all could have your name on the birth certificate. Yes, sir. With, how long were you at the hospital the day before this incident occurred? Do you recall? Uh, that same day, like after my son was born, yeah, uh, I stayed there till seven or eight. I think I don't want to say it was eight p.m. Did you have to work that night? Uh, no, I was off. I you was were off that night. Yes, sir. Okay. And so, uh, why why was it that you left the hospital that night? Was there was there a fight, an argument, or was it just you were? No, no, nah, I was I was on house arrest, so I had to be. Uh, my court officer didn't stay there till nine nine p.m. So I left an hour early, uh, and so I, so I could be home on time. Okay, so did you go home? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, could you tell the jury what happened the next day? What time, did you, or could you tell the jury what started or what you did that following day? Uh, I woke up, uh, I woke up, well, really my, my, my mom woke up, and uh, she was like, hey, I'm about to go to work. Uh, I'm finna get a ride. Uh, and I was like, why are you finna get a ride? She's like, well, my tire. It's pop. Uh, I got a nail on my tire. She was like, can you change it? And I was like, yeah, I got it. I'll change it. I'll change it. And she's like, okay, I'm going to leave my keys right here, and I'm going to go ahead and get it right. And she's like, uh, are you going to go to the hospital today? I was like, yeah, I'm going to call. I'm going to call Selena in a little bit and see, see you know what I'm saying? I'm like, if I'm called, if it's cool to go over there. And uh, she was like, okay. <clears throat> and I gave her a hug, and she was telling me, you know, be a good dad, you know, raise them, back, be there, don't, don't be like your dad. You know, I was like, I won't. Gave her a hug and kiss, and she went to work. What time? What time of day was this, Nestor? Uh, she, like seven a.m. Seven. Yeah, she had to be at work at eight. You know, eight in the morning. Yeah. And what did you What did you do following that? Uh, well, I, I came. I went outside. Uh, no, 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 no I, didn't, I didn't go outside. Uh, I, I ended up calling Selena. Uh, I called Selena, and uh, I text. No, I text Selena, and I was like, hey. Should I get a haircut? I want to take pictures. I want to take family pictures. You know, I want to take family pictures. You, me, my son. Uh, she cut my hair, and uh, she told me, she, she told me she didn't want me to come. She was like, I don't want you to come. And I was like, Why? You know, I was like, Why don't you want me to come? And she was like, Ah, I don't want you to come. I don't want you to come. And so I'm like, Man. So I called her. And I ended up calling her, but when I called her, she was on the hospital phone. She was on the hospital phone, and. Uh, we didn't. We really didn't talk because she was talking on the phone. I want to say she was talking to CPS because uh, they're. I guess they were asking her questions about me because uh, she was saying when I get off parole and stuff. Like he's like, yeah, he got like two months left on parole. Uh, yeah, he got the job and you know stuff like that. So I hung up the call. <clears throat> so I hung up the call and uh, I went outside. I was gonna go fix my mom's tire. I went. So I went outside and then she called me. So whenever she called me, she was like, hey, what time are you going to be here? And I was like, man, I was like, man, I, I was like, I, I'm, I don't got time right now. I was like, well, my mom needs a tire fix. I was like, I ain't got time to play games with you. I really don't. <clears throat> and she was like, oh, see, I'm finna come. And I was like, no, nah. I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to go, but not right now. And then uh, she was like, uh, she was like, uh, she was like, oh, I ended up asking her. And I was like, who, I say, who, who has been over there? And she was like, why? And I said, I was asking who's been over there. And she was like, oh, you think I got somebody over here? Woo -woo. 
I said, nah, I said, I don't think, I said, man, I'm talking about your family. I was like, you, has it like your mom or your sisters or like, you talk to anybody, has anybody gone? And she was like, oh man, you think I'm fucking somebody else? And then and I said, man, I was like, man, look, I, I know you're fucking somebody else. And she said, how you know that? And I said, cause my, my pride, my, my, my dick hurts, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, what? And I said, man, I said, my dick, she like, I ain't stuck, I ain't playing with you. And she hung with the car. She hung with the car. Uh, after that, I was, I was about to fix it, I was about to fix the tire. She texted me and she was like, hey, are you gonna sign the birth certificate? And I was like, of course. I texted her back, I was like, of course. And so I was like, okay, I'm about to, I'm about to cook, I'm about to head to the hospital. So now I'm finna head to the hospital. Uh, I go inside, I, I throw my mom's uh, car keys up, I put them up, and uh, I rock the apartment, I walk out, I hop in my truck, and I start driving towards the hospital. Uh, I start driving towards the hospital, uh, I can't find it. I couldn't find it. I was driving, and I drove for minutes. They cutting corners, driving around, looking looking for the hospital. I even pulled over. I, some people jogging. I was like, "Hey, do you know where Methodist Hospital is at?" They said, "No." And I was like, "Okay." So I drove around, I drove around. I was like, "Man, I know there's something over here. I know I just, I just came. I was just here yesterday. You know what I'm saying?" I was like, "So I put it on my GPS. The GPS was telling me to hop back on the freeway." And I'm like, "No, that's wrong." So. Finally, I was just like, man, I drove for a minute to where I, I, ran, I ran my gas down. And I was like, damn, I was like, damn, I need gas. Okay, now this, I, I got to, I don't think, well, I think you're giving us a good description, but maybe a little bit detailed as to how you got there. Let's talk about, so you were, you had some problems getting over there just as far as being turned around and lost for a little while, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and where did the beer come from that you ended up walking into the hospital with? Uh, I put into the, I, like I said, I need a gas, so I put into the cemetery. Uh, I walked inside the store, and I was like, man, I'm just finna head home. I can't find the hospital, I'm about to head home. So I bought me a steel reserve. Uh, I walked to the counter. Uh, it's due behind the counter. I paid for it. And I asked him, I was like, hey, do you know what Methodist Hospital is at? He said, no. The lady that was working with him, she was like, I don't know either, but I think it's on Colorado. And I was like, yeah, I just, I can't find it. She's like, I really don't know where it's at. I was like, okay. So I walked out. I start. I proceeded to pump gas. A dude walks up behind me. He, a dude walks up behind me, and he's like, "Hey, uh, Methodist Hospital's five minutes away from me." And I was like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah, it's it's five. If you just drive down here, you make a right. You know, it's, it's right there." And I was like, "Okay, man, appreciate it. Thank you, man." So I hopped in the truck, and I drove, and I and I, I arrived at the hospital. So you get to the hospital that morning. Do you do you do you know what time it was? <sighs> I, I I really don't. I, I I didn't pay attention to the time. So you get to the hospital and you're telling the uh, uh, jury that w when you get there, you thought you were getting there to go over and sign the birth certificate. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, were you in a good mood or were you in a bad mood? What kind of mood were you, what kind of mood were you in at that time? No, I was, I was good. I was good. I wasn't, I mean, I, mean, I just, if I sign the birth certificate, put that ass name on it. Okay. And... Uh, Tell the jury what happened once you got inside that room that caused that, that, that changed the whole situation. Could you tell them what took place? Uh, okay, when I walked in, uh, my son, he was sleeping in a, a bassinet. Uh, I went in there, I, you know, rugs the bed, like, hey, little man, and, you know, and so I went and I walked into the restroom, I used the restroom, I walked out, I proceeded to walk out, I started looking for the gun, you know, right? Started looking for the gun. She was like, "What you looking for?" I said, "The gun." And she was like, "Why?" And I said, "I got it sold." I said, "I talked to dude last night. He, you know, he wanted to buy it." And so she was like, "All right." So I'm on my phone also. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like she said, uh, I, I, she said sentimental. I, I, I don't want to say I'm sentimental. I'm more expressionate or something. You know, I like telling people that you know, you know, I, I love them and stuff. And I'll drink a little bit or do some drugs. Like, hey man. I I love you, man. I'm glad you're in my life. I'm, I'm, you know, you got the aggressive people, and then you got the, the lovers, I guess, you know, over there. <clears throat> and so, so, uh, so when you're sitting there having this conversation, could you tell the jury what it was that made her start pulling the blanket over your head and refusing to talk to you? Uh, I don't recall her putting the blanket over her head. You don't recall her pulling the blanket over her head? No. What, what do you recall happening uh, when you were having this conversation with her? <clears throat> Uh, I ended up uh, sitting down, and I was like, man, get the gun and stuff. And so I was like, so I'm about to sign the birth ticket to leave. And so uh, I'm texting uh, 
my brother, uh, my brother called me and I talked to him briefly, my nieces and stuff. <laughs> well, uh, we started uh, we started talking. She trying to talk to me. I was like, "Shut the fuck up! Don't talk to me." You know what I'm saying? Woo -woo. And she's like, oh, "Oh no!" She started. Uh, she's like, "Man, you drinking?" And, woo -woo -woo. and I was like, "Man, I was like, I don't want to drink." I was like, "I'm not. I ain't been drinking like that." And she's like, "No, oh, you drinking?" And I was like, "Man, shut up!" I was like, "Why don't you talk to me?" And she's like, "Nah, you're not supposed to be in here drinking." And woo -woo. I was like, don't nobody even know this is a, this is a beer. You know? It looks like a Arizona or something. And she was like, she's like, nah, man. She's like, man, they're gonna come in here and see you, whatever. And so I was like, man, I was like, bro, I don't even talk to me, bro. I said, yeah, you really nasty. And she was like, what you mean you nasty? I said, yeah, you really nasty. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, well, and I said, man, I said, man, my, my, my shit hurt. Bro. I'm just signing the birth certificate and I'm gonna leave. I said, man, nigga, my, my. Yeah, your voice is dropping. Your voice is dropping a little bit. Keep it up, so jury. It's, 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 I'm like, man, it's, you know, my pride here is, it's really, it's really fucked up. And so, uh, she's like, uh, she's like, man, she's like, nah, man, she's like, I ain't fucking nobody, and da, da, da. And so, uh, she gets on the phone, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yeah, you need to tell whoever you've been fucking with that you got that shit, you passing out that shit. And she, and what, you saw, what are you talking about? Uh, I, I never had an STD before, uh, before that. So I mean, I, I knew it was something wrong. I didn't know exactly what it was. Why was it that you knew something wrong? Uh, when I when I urinate, <clears throat> when I urinate, it, 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 it hurts. Yeah. yeah. So y'all start. So you're talking about her messing with somebody else, telling her that she needs to tell people that she's probably giving them STDs too. Yeah, I'm like, you, you, cause she ended up getting on the phone. And I was like, you need to be. Calling them people and letting them know you passing out that shit. Okay, what happened? What what happened as a result of this conversation? <clears throat> you said what happened to the yeah. Person? What happened? Tell me what happened next after y'all are having this conversation. Uh, oh, the the nurse. <clears throat> she walks in, so she walks in, and uh, uh, Selena she she gets up and she's like, "Hey, I need to use the restroom." So when she gets up, I get with her. I get up with her. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Prior to any of prior to any of this happening right here, now you're talking about. Th had there been another nurse in there earlier that day that had come in and been there for a few minutes and then left? Do you recall that? No, sir. Okay. So the, when you're talking about right now, you're talking about a nurse came in, and that's when Selena wanted to go to the restroom. Are you talking about the uh, uh, the woman that ended up getting shot? Yes, sir. Okay. So you guys are having this conversation. It's going on. Up to that point in time, had you ever threatened that you were going to kill Selena or kill yourself? No, sir. No, no, sir. Did you ever threaten to Selena that you were going to kill anybody coming in that room? No. Did you have any intention of harming anybody? No, I didn't. Okay. Tell the jury what happened, and you just described how you got to the point where the nurse came in the room. Selena wants to go to the restroom. Tell the jury what happened next. Well, she gets up and I get up with her, and she's walking. No, oh, when the nurse came in, she said, you know, good good afternoon or good evening. And I said it back. And Selena gets up and she's like, I need to rest you. She had uh, told the nurse, I need to rest you. But I got up with her. And so I was like, why you need to go to the restroom with your phone? And she was like, she's like, because. She, uh, and then the nurse asked them, is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, everything's okay. And then she said, no, it's not. She was like, I don't want him here. This ain't even his baby. So I slapped her. So when I slapped her, the nurse was like, oh. And so then Selena hit me and we got into like, a, a, whenever I got up, I had the pistol on me too. You know what I'm saying? I had, I had, she ended up before that, well, Selena had handed me, handed me the pistol. And so I had the pistol right here. It's a little pistol. So I, when I got up, I got up holding it too. And um, she hit me. And so, you know, I kind of like, you know, I had the pistol in my hand. I don't think the nurse knew I had the pistol in my hand. And so we got into like a little, a little brawl or whatever. And that's when I, you know, I, Hit her, I ended up hitting her with the pistol. And that's when the nurse, the nurse, she's like, stop. She got in between us. And uh, the, my shirt, the, the black shirt that I had on, it was already kind of like over me. It was already, because she was like putting on the shirt too. And so the gun went off. That's what, that's what. Okay, who was pulling on your shirt? Uh, Selena. Okay, so you're wearing a shirt and while y'all, you guys get into a tussle with the nurse there, she's pulling on your shirt. And you're saying it's kind of a bunch of them now around your shoulder area? Yeah, the, the shirt she was putting on, I had a black thermal shirt on. Okay. And 
And then you said the gun went off. Describe exactly what you mean when you say the gun went off. How did it go off? Uh, she, uh, the nurse tried to stop the bite. She got in between us and uh, she yelled stop. She's like, stop. And like you know, the, the gun went off. And uh, we stopped, everything slowed down. You know, I was, I was kind of confused for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And the first thing that Selena said, she was like, what did you do? You know, and I was like, no, man, it's, it's your fault. This is your fault, you know what I'm saying? Because the nurse, she was kind of like leaning forward and then she ended up falling back. Did you did you intentionally shoot this nurse or no 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 okay how did she tell explain to the jury how it was that this nurse ended up shot uh, she got in between us she got in between whenever me me and Cindy got into like a tussle <coughs> got into it uh, she got in between us she tried, she said oh stop and try to stop us did you point the gun at her with any intention of shooting the gun and killing her no sir did you have any intention to cause some harm to this nurse no sir. And you said that once you shot her, she was just kind of in a, you said she was kind of standing there and you looked like you were crouching a little bit. What are you just trying to describe to the jury? She like, like she like leaned forward like this. Like she leaned forward like this and then she, she leaned. It, it, it all happened so slow. It went, it went real slow and then she just ended up falling back. So she, she was leaning forward and then she ended up falling back? Yes, sir. Okay. What's the next thing that you recall happening at that time? <coughs> I, uh, I panicked. I, I panicked. I was like, shit, 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 shit. And Selena, she started screaming. She was like, oh, man. I couldn't even understand what she was saying. And I opened up the door. And uh, I shot. I opened up the door like, with my right hand. I opened up the door. And I shot out the door. Boom, boom. Twice. I shot out the door twice. Did you see anybody outside the door when you shot? No, I didn't even look outside. I just shot. What was the purpose of that? <sighs> I, I was so panicked. I was, I was, I just shot somebody. You know what I mean? I was just, I, I was real panicked. It was like a, uh, how can I say this? Like a example would be like a, like if, like if my mom or like somebody's mom has like a, a favorite coffee mug that she drinks coffee with every morning, and you drop it and you break it, and when you broke it, you. you you panic, you're like, oh, and your mom's like, hey, what was that? And so you don't want her to see, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want, you don't want her to see, you just uh, panic, and I, I try to, like, I guess, make another distraction or, or something. I, I wasn't just really just, I wasn't thinking right there, you know what I'm saying? I just wasn't. Okay, after you fired that, after you opened the door, you just fired the gun. Uh, did you actually see the uh, second nurse in the hallway at that time? No, I didn't even see the second nurse in the hallway. In the hallway. Tell the jury what happened after you shot that firearm out the door. <clears throat> uh, so I went back, you know, the nurse laying on the floor. Seeing that she's screaming, she's like, oh my gosh. Blah, blah. And so it's, it's all hectic. I'm, I'm kind of panicking, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm like, shit, shit, shit. And so I, Selena, she said, get help. And so I turned around. And when I turned around, I walked out the door. I tried to walk out the door. I, I felt the heat just through my leg. Boom. And I, I stepped back, I jumped back into I jumped back into the room and I looked down and I was like, they shot me. I was like, damn, they shot me, you know what I'm saying? And so I went back, I went back into the room and uh, I called my mom. I called her mom and she answered the phone and she was like, yeah, and I was like, hey man, I was like, man, I, I just shot somebody, man. I, I just I think I just killed somebody, man. She's laying on the floor and she mom, she's like, what? What? And then she's like, tell me you're playing. I was like, no, I'm not. And so I hung up the phone. I hung up the phone. I called my little brother. I called my little brother. And he's like, hey. And I was like, hey, man, I'm shot. I'm shot. And he's like, what? And I was like, man, I'm shot. They're about to come in and shoot. They're about to kill me, man. And then he's like, what? And he's like, I, I don't understand. He's like, hey. And I was like, man, they're, they're going to kill me, man. And I was like, they're going to kill me. They already shot me. <clears throat> and so, uh, uh, by now, Selena has the baby. She had grabbed the baby at, at this time. And she's, she's holding the baby. And I'm like, hey, give me the baby, give me the baby. And she was like, no, no. And I'm like, give me the baby, man. I was like, man, give me, like, give me the baby, man. Give me the baby, put him in the crib. Because the crib, the bassinet, is by the restroom. And so I'm thinking, I was like, man, they're about to come in here and start shooting, man. They're about to shoot us. And she's like, she's like, no, no, no. What was you asking her to give you the baby for? I wanted to put him in the bassinet and put him by the restroom. Because 
I was like, man, they, they about to come in. They already shot me. They about to come in and start shooting. What happened at that point in time? I started feeling the pain. At first, I didn't feel the pain, but now I'm feeling it. I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh. And so I went around the bed. I don't know if I if I sat down in the closet or I sat down in the front of the closet. And uh, I was like, shit. And uh, Selena's like, she's steady screaming. She's steady screaming. And uh, she like, ah, what the fuck, 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 what the she was like, what, what? I was like, man, I'm finna just let him kill me, man. I'm finna just let him kill me. They already shot me. And uh, she started screaming. She, she screamed my name. She said, that's her. And then she held up my son, and she was like, he needs you. And I was like, man, shit, man. I was like, man, I was like, nah, man. I was like, nah, I can't go back. I can't go back, man. No. And so I try to get up. And so when I try to get up, uh, I hear, oh, no, before that, I hear the officer he, he said something, I couldn't understand what he said, and I'm like, I can't hear you, because she's screaming. Uh, my little brother was still on the phone, and he's like, Nestor, Nestor, Nestor. He's like, Nestor, Nestor, hey, man, don't hurt the baby, don't hurt the baby. And I was like, I was like nah, nah, nah. And uh, so I'm like, man, I'm like, man, I'm finna just go out there, I'm finna kill me. So uh, uh, Selena, she was like, she was like, no, no. And so when uh, she said no, uh, I tried to get up. And when, when I tried to get up, it, it, took, it was kind of hard to get up, so I'm, I'm trying to get up. And uh, I was like, I'm shot. And she didn't know I was shot at the time, but now she didn't think because she put my baby down. She was like, you're shot. And I was like, I'm shot, man. I'm already shot. And so I was like, man, I'm finna just go out there, man. I was like, man. But in my mind, I thought, it was like 15 cops out there ready. They, the cops, they, they going to kill you. So you. Where was the gun at this point in time, Nestor? Uh, I still had it in my hand. How did that? How did that gun subsequently end up out in the hallway? Uh, I, she was telling me not to go out there. She's like, no. She's like, don't go out there. She's like, what? She was like, I was like, my finger out. She's like, why are you going to do this? Why are you going to do this? And I'm like, man, I was like, I don't want to go, go back to jail, bro. I ain't trying to go back to prison. I just spent most of my youth in there. And uh, she's like, man, he needs you. He needs you. And so. Uh, She's like, he needs you, he needs you. And I was like, all right, man, all right. And uh, after that, I, I fell. I, I, and from what I remember, I fell. And that was it. I blanked out. The rest of the stuff that on the video, me being in the hallway, and, you know, I didn't even know I had said she cheated on me. Uh, I also said, uh, I, uh, I, saw, I heard myself say, uh, call my mom. And uh, I screamed at my brother's name, too, on the video. Uh, but other than that, I don't remember nothing else. I don't remember nothing else. I woke up at Baylor Hospital like two days later, and that's when I learned that uh, Miss Flowers was, was also, I didn't even know she was dead. Did you, okay, uh, you said that you woke up in the hospital and you found out at that point in time that two people had, had, had died as a result of this incident, is that correct? Yes, sir. And, and one of those being Miss Jacqueline Pua that had come into the room originally uh, as well as Katie Flowers, who was the uh, nurse that was injured when you discharged that weapon out into the hallway. You understand that now? Yes, sir. And until we actually show these videos, you, your, your memory as to exactly what, what took place in regards to the exact timing was a little bit off, wasn't it? Excuse me? You, uh, that, that, that reminded you or that brought back to light some of the things that had occurred. Oh, uh, on, on the, on the yes, video? Sir. Yeah, yes, sir. <clears throat> so uh, you you talked about it, and again, this, uh, what you told the jury is you did not intentionally, annoyingly kill these ladies, did you? No, no, I would never do that. And you understand that uh, as you sit here and you offer this explanation to the jury, they have to decide whether or not to believe any of your testimony. Yes, sir. Can you tell them why it is that you believe that your testimony today is worthy of belief? Uh, because it's the truth. You know, uh, it's just what happened. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and hide and, and try to say that I'm innocent, you know what I'm saying, because we're not. Uh, 
But you understand that when we've explained to you, there's a difference between shooting and killing somebody and going there intentionally or have causing their death by your reckless action. You understand that? Yes, sir. So you fully yeah, I, I, I never intended for that. I never right? intended to kill nobody. You didn't take full responsibility for causing their deaths. Yes, sir. I do. I do take responsibility. I, and I'm not you, uh, said you woke up in the hospital two days later. You tell the jury how long you were in the hospital. Um, I want to say I was in the hospital like four days. About four days in the hospital. And subsequent to that, you were taken in custody of Dallas County Sheriff's Department. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. I want to just ask you one thing. You you made references in your testimony to I call somebody. I mean, I texted them, or I text somebody, or I call them. Uh, are you even sure about the exact these little snippets of conversation that you were having? Do you remember for sure if they were all one of them was a particular text, or may it have been just a particular phone call that you were going back and forth with? Um, I know, I know, I called somebody. Uh, no, I know you called somebody. But I was saying. When you were describing for, for the jury earlier, you said, well, I, I called him, but not texted him, talking about your brother. So, do you, okay. do you recall specifically everything that was said or done? Do you re specifically recall, or can you even possibly recall whether those were actual texts or phone calls that you were having? Uh, not not all of them. Not all of them. Uh, some of them. I know it was messages and calls. You know, it was messages and calls. That's right, I believe that's all the questions I have for you, sir. Because we passed the witness. Question. All right, Steve. Thanks, Ron. Mr. Hernandez, let's go back and first of all talk about your criminal history because you left out some of it. Is that right? I uh, guess so, yes, sir. Okay. You talked about how you were convicted of robbery in 2012 and you were sentenced to two years in PC, right? Yes, sir. Okay, you were also convicted on that same day for burden of habitation. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And you were also convicted of unlawful possession of a firearm on that, on that same day, correct? Yes, sir. And you were also convicted of possession of heroin on that same day, correct? Yes, sir. And so all of those offenses were part of that TDC that you did back in 2012, isn't that correct? Yes, sir. Did you forget about those? No, but on the indictment, when it shows the enhancements, it's, it says robbery on there. That's the main enhancement that they use to enhance an indictment. So it's robbery. It's the main thing that stands out on the indictment. Oh, okay. I'm talking about the other offenses. I understand about the robbery. What about the bur burglary, the possession of the firearm, and heroin? You forgot to mention those as far as your conviction? Uh, no, I didn't forget to mention them, but that's just, that's the main, that was the, that the robbery, it, 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 it outrules the rest of the charges, basically. Okay. From my understanding. Okay. But you admit that you were convicted of all those offenses in 2012, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so fast forward to 2015, you mentioned that you were convicted of aggravated robbery and sentenced to the eight-year term, correct? Yes, sir. But you were also convicted uh, around that time for another burglary of habitation, correct? Yes, sir. Um, as well as a theft, is that correct? Uh, theft by check, yes. Okay. All right, and so um, <coughs> you've already said you were open about you being on parole, Correct? Yes, sir. Uh, you had several violations of your parole. Are you on parole? Isn't that correct? Yes, we approach this. Yes, sir.
presence. We are still outside the presence of the jury. Now, uh, the defense had raised an objection uh, to the state questioning uh, the defendant regarding uh, his parole violation under Rule 609. Well, it's, it's impermissible of 609, but it's violated right. 404B. All right. Um, I'm assuming that the state gave 404B notice of all of these violations. Is that right? It is, right. Okay. So we're talking about Rule 609, and I'm sustaining the defense's <coughs> objection um, regarding the state question of the defendant going forward, okay, regarding any parole violations. However, the defendant did open the door to the fact that he was on parole, okay? And he did, and that information is before the jury, just so we would, we would ask at this time that since that information is before the jury, I don't believe it's proper for the state to use it as the fact that it was a parole violation to impeach his credibility, which is what they're trying to do. This is a separate, this is a separate issue from showing just a bad act and, and, and actions in conformity with bad acts. That's what they're trying to, to use both of them in, so uh, is the court right. saying that we're going to move forward from this issue and not we're touch on to, it? We're going to move forward from this issue, and I'm instructing the state not to <coughs> go further into any parole violations without approaching the court first. But just so I'm clear, you know, when the jury comes back in, even though know, he's admitted to several violations, including consuming alcohol, drugs, and possessing a firearm, I can no longer ask him about that um, and specifically as it pertains to him having knowledge of all these things being violations of his parole based on paperwork that he signed when he was placed on parole. Well, you can ask him about the violations, but not as it, as concerning parole, because this is not a parole revocation here where that's relevant. So you said I can ask him about them being violations, violations of, of what, the law? Yes, exactly. Well, well Judge, they're not violent. None of those, none of that conduct's a violation of the law. So, well, in, in and of itself. Well, well, let me say this: the defendant opened the door. We we opened that, the door. Yes, here. Stating, let me finish. Stating yes, that he's on parole. He was on parole. Yes, I don't know if he's still on parole. He was on parole. He was convicted of you know these other felonies. Right. Okay. And here we are uh, in this proceeding. This is a different proceeding than a parole violation proceeding. Right. So what I'm asking the state not to do is to go into parole violations. As the defense stated, those are not convictions. Can we come at it from a, can we, may be allowed to come at it, just explain our viewpoint? Yes, you can. Okay. If you look at 609, I think no, that's- No, I understand. Okay. But that's not where we're coming from. All right, explain it to me. So where we're coming from is just like, if you put somebody on probation and you tell them don't do certain things and they sign it, they they <coughs> made a contract that I don't do certain things. And when you get on parole, you do the same thing. And he has a let me finish. He has admitted that he's on parole. We have his parole papers here. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Okay? That's correct. And he has told the state of Texas that he wasn't going to do certain things, okay, which goes to his credibility. And every day that he did those things is an impact on his credibility that should be known by the jury. He said he's on parole. Everybody knows that common sense you have parole conditions, okay? And that's the only reason. We're not talking, he's already introduced the bad <coughs> that himself. We're not interested in that. This is merely a question of credibility, not a bad act. He put that on. We're not, we don't even need to deal with that because they put it on. This is about credibility. That's the way we see it. Right. Now, uh, Mr. Johnson, are there any other violations uh, that you're asking the defense not to elicit from the this? state? The, the, the I'm state. sorry, the state not to elicit from the Your Honor, court, other than the ones that you've raised. Well, they, they've already agreed that they're not even going to try to do it. They're not going to go into anything. The only the only thing that we need delineated is the court's the precise measure of the court's ruling, which I believe when you came out on the took the bench, you made the, the correct and proper ruling and stated that we're no longer going to address anything in regards to anything any conduct being a parole violation. And I would refer to the court, Mr. Cruz, I was in here saying that the uh, 
this is some kind of a contract to do what you're supposed to do. 609 does not allow that in any fashion. It'd just be like saying, well, he didn't pay his credit card bill. He, you know, he promised that he would if they gave him the money. Those are outside the scope and purview of 609. They're not admissible. He's already admitted to the conduct of being on parole. He's admitted to having a weapon, <coughs> drinking, and using drugs. But to case those incidences in terms of parole violations is an attempt to circumvent 609's prohibition against using 404B material <coughs> to impeach credibility, which is what the court ruled immediately. So we're saying that this, I would submit, Your Honor, that with this case and the status of this case is the way it is, we're, we're dancing on an eggshell here to try to sit there and push the, push the button on or, or move the goalpost in, in uh, evidentiary law here. I think it's pretty clear they can't do it. We're asking the court to enforce your ruling that they can't do it. If I may, we agree. We are in agreement that a general question about anything other than what he brought up, which is the way he started this, acknowledging what he brought up, we are in agreement that we shouldn't go into whatever else is ever else other than what he has brought up. He brought it up in here. I don't think we're dancing on any eggshell at all, except the eggshell of the truth. That's the eggshell we're dancing on. And he has made his own statements. He's put it in evidence that he's on parole and he's doing these things. And he has put this, his credibility, by taking a stand in question. And that's the only reason, honestly, Judge, it's not a six, it's not a, a bad act. It's credibility. And 609? And he, he, he doesn't have anything to do with credit cards. I'm not talking about credit cards. He is talking about sense. parole violations. Parole he violations. swore that he was going to do certain things, and he has admitted that he didn't do them. Good. But that, that 609 doesn't say anything about contract violations and promises to do right. It, it talks about that's, that's our position, Judge. All right. Again, I'm sustaining the defendant's objection. The state is not to go into the parole violations. And again, we're going to renew our motion for a mistrial at this time based upon the 404B violation that the court granted to the defense regarding these, these matters not being brought up in, outside in front of the jury without having a prior hearing. That's denied. Thank you. Let's bring the jury in. Understand uh, the jurors are present and seated. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your patience. Uh, I know we took a longer break than we anticipated, but we were working hard during your break. Um, is the state ready to continue with cross examination of the defendant? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Mr. Hernandez, before the break, you had indicated that you were on parole at the time of these killings, correct? 
Yes, sir. It also indicated that you had used uh, methamphetamines. Is that correct? Yes, sir. How many times have you used I was only out three weeks. Okay. So after you got out, you did use them? Excuse me? After you got out, you did use them? You said you only been out three weeks? Yeah, I was only out three weeks. That, that Thursday was the first time that I had used it. You said you were out. Out from what? ISF. Yes. I, I just got out. Okay. And so after you got out, how many, how many times have you used that them? That Thursday. I'm sorry? That Thursday. That Thursday. October 20th. All right, let's talk about this firearm that you admitted that you were in possession of. Uh, what did you get the firearm? Um, I want to say like April. Around April or May, so around around that time. April of 2022. Yes, sir. 22. Okay, where did you get the gun from? <coughs> I, I bought it off somebody. You recall where that was when you bought the gun? Excuse me. Do you recall where you bought the gun? You said you bought it from somebody. <coughs> yes, sir. Where was that? At a restaurant. What restaurant? McDonald's. I'm sorry? McDonald's. And who did you buy it from? Doesn't make the relevance. Doesn't make the relevance, huh? Directed to the doctor, said she used this gun in the doctor. Who'd you buy it from? Uh, so. Somebody, man. Okay, so you don't want to tell us who you bought it from? No. And where was this McDonald's located that you, when you bought it? Carrollton yeah, Farmer Branch area. Okay. How much did you pay for it? 200 okay. Let's talk about this gun bag. You claim that Selena put the gun in the bag, is that correct? No, I put it. You put it in the bag? I put it in the bag. And so when you brought the bag into the hospital, you knew the gun was in there, correct? Uh, yes, sir. You talked about how Selena didn't want you to take her to the hospital the day before her water broke. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Isn't it true that she didn't want you to take her because that you were on drugs? No, sir. And you admit that you were hired at the hospital that day, correct, when you killed these two women? Uh, I hadn't used that day. I used that Thursday. Uh, but that day, no, I didn't use, I didn't use the methamphetamines. So you're saying that you were not high at the time that you killed these two women? 
Uh, May, I mean, it was two days ago, but I mean, it, it depends like how much you use and, and stuff. I didn't do that much. But, how much did you use? Uh, I sniffed the line. So you tell us, so you know, you were you intoxicated? Were you high that day on methamphetamine when you killed these two women? Um, no, I, don't, I wouldn't say I was just high, high, high. You know what I mean? Like, but it was yes. more, it was more like a come down. I was already like coming down from the, from the drug. Okay, you weren't high, high. You were just, you were high. No, I was coming down. And so this tussle with Selena inside the room, you, you know that Selena was attached to an IV, correct? And there was only so much movement that she could have? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, you also know that she had, had a C-section the day before and that she was detained from the surgery? Yes, sir. Okay, but it's your testimony that y'all had a fight inside that room with her being attached to an IV and her having a C-section and being detained. That's your testimony? Yes, sir. And that's what you want the jury to believe? Yes, sir. Now what I want to believe is the truth. And so I just want to make clear and make sure that I understand what you're saying. That your testimony is that when you shot and killed Jacqueline Fakua, that the gun went off accidentally. Is that what you're telling the jury? Yes. Who was in control of the gun when it went off? I had it in my hand. Okay. So I would like for you to set up for us everybody's position when the gun went off, okay? Where were you standing in the room when the gun went off? I was standing by uh, Ms. Pakula. Okay, and where was Ms. Pakula standing? Uh, kind of close to the bed, like, but not on the bed, but uh, like, here's the bed. She's standing right here, I was standing right here, and I said, you standing right here. With Ms. Pakula between me, like, kind of right here. Okay, and was she facing you, or was she facing away from you? Who, Ms. Pakula? Yes. No, she she was like facing Selena. Okay. And so her back was to you. Uh, kind of her side side back. Okay. And so you and Selena are fighting, according to you, correct? Excuse me. You and Selena are fighting. Is that correct? The side of the gun is going. Uh, we argued. We we exchanged for a couple words first. Okay. Yeah. And then tell us about how the gun went off. Uh, I was holding it. It's a little gun. It's, it's y'all seen it. It's little. You know so whenever I got up, uh, so but I, I, I had it right here. So if I walk with it, it'll, it'll fall. So when I was walking with it, I had I was holding it. You were walking with it when the gun went off. Yeah, I was like walking like because I got off the couch. Okay. I was sitting on the couch before that. All right. Was your finger on the trigger? <clears throat> uh, I don't recall. I don't, I don't recall. I remember holding it. But as far as my finger on the trigger, I don't, I don't recall, I don't recall. Well, the trigger has to be pulled for it to fire, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. And so, again, the testimony, you got up off the couch. Where'd you, get, where'd you get the gun from inside the room? Did you pull it from the bag? Did you pull it from your pocket? Where'd you get the gun from? Nah, I told her you had to get it to me. Uh, get, uh, get it for me. Okay. She ended up getting it for me. And She's like, here, take get rid of it. So the testimony that Selena, that Selena gave you the gun? Yes, sir. Okay, and so you got us off the couch with the gun in your hand, correct? Yes, sir. Jacqueline was inside the room at this point? Yes, sir. Did she see that you had a gun, Jacqueline? I don't know. I don't think so. I doubt it. Okay, I doubt it. so you're walking with the gun in your hand, correct? Mm -hmm. It's it's not, it's, it's like I'm holding it, but it's I kind of got like tucked in. I don't have it out, like to where like, you can see it, but I'm fine. I got it like this, because if I let it go, it's going to fall down my pants. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's not gonna, I didn't have it branched open, like out in the open. <clears throat> okay, so explain, where was it? Where was it at? Like right here by my hip. Was it inside your pants or outside your pants? Kind of, a little bit, I mean the gun's little, you know what I'm saying? I got it in my hand, and yeah, the gun's like this big. So I got it like right here, like kind of tucked in. I had a belt on. Okay, and so how did the gun get to a point where, he, where she shot to the back, in the back of the head? Uh, because uh, I had slapped, I had slapped Selena, and uh, she she struck me back, and uh, we got into a little tussle. And I had my shirt, I had the, the thermal shirt on, and uh, that's when her, she started putting on it, and uh, well, I started trying to trying to hit her. I guess hit her with the pistol. Okay. And so you 
So you say you slap Salim? Yes, sir. With the gun still in your hand at that point? Slap the one they've had. I'm sorry? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, with the gun still in my hand. Which hand was the gun in? The right hand. In your right hand? Yes, sir. And you slap Salim with which hand? My left hand. Okay. And so you said you should hit Salim with the gun as well? Uh, yes, sir. At what point? This was before or after you shot Mr. Salim? <clears throat> Uh, four. Okay, so you're hitting Selena with the gun in the head. How many times did you hit in the head? Uh, I don't recall. It, it wasn't like I was hitting her. She was also like putting on my shirt. And, you know, I was like, it was like a little tussle. It wasn't like I, just me hitting her in the head. It was like, you know, she hit me back and like scratched, pulled my shirt. And that's whenever Miss Baku, uh, she said she would yell stop and try to stop it. And so while you're striking Selena with the gun, where's Miss Baku? She's standing right there. In the middle of y'all? Which mean? In the middle of you and Selena? She's in the middle of you all? No, she's next to us. <laughs> next to you? Yes. And so while you're striking Selena, Ms. Baku is standing where? Next to you? Next to Selena? Where exactly is she? Next, next to us. She's standing like next to us. And she yelled stop and got in between us. Okay. So she got in between you at that point? Yes, sir. And so again, how did she get shot in the back of head, of head at that point? Cause I'm still trying to hit the Selena, and right. I'm going on. Okay, so it's your testimony. You've seen the autopsy photographs, correct? Yes, sir. You saw that Mr. Kua had a gunshot wound directly to the back of her head, right above her neck, correct? Yes, sir. And it's your testimony that while you were striking, trying to strike Selena with the gun, that she gets a perfect bullet hole in the center of the back of her head. That's your testimony? Yes, sir. All right, and so as it relates to the shooting of Katie Flowers, I didn't quite understand your testimony. You said that you panicked, right? And yes, you shot Mr. in the back of the head. Yes, sir. And that you shot out the door for what reason? Uh, I mean, I just panicked, you know what I mean? I, I didn't know what to do. I had to, you know what I'm saying? I had to shot somebody, I guess. I was just still, my mind, all my thoughts, everything, was, it was going 100 miles per hour. I just, all my thoughts was crazy. And I just didn't want nobody to see, like, what just happened, you know what I mean? Like, but that's what was going through my mind. I was like, shit, shit. Like, okay, so you're saying you didn't want somebody to see what happened, so you shot, you want to shoot that person to make sure that they would see what you did? Is that what you're telling them? No, no, not at all. So what did you mean you didn't want to I didn't know no one was out there. But you admit that you fired twice, correct? Yes, sir. And so your answer to just shooting and killing somebody is to shoot again, correct? Twice. You say you say what? Your answer to shooting and killing Miss Pakula is to shoot out the door twice. That's your answer to that? Uh it was more of like of a distraction, like Who were you trying to distract? Uh, anybody, like from not coming over here. You know what I mean? Like for not coming in the room. It was somebody dead in the room. And somebody's about to come in and I, I wasn't, I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm just I'm panicking, I'm scared, you know. So when you shot out the door, was the door open? Uh, no. The door was not open? It was, you shot out the door? no, it, it was, I, I, I opened it. Okay, so you opened the door and fired outside the door, correct? Yes, sir. Were you looking outside the door when you fired? No, sir. Where were you looking at when you fired outside the door? I opened it. I opened the door with my right hand. That's a handle that goes up. I pulled it like this, and I shot twice out the door. Where were you looking when you fired outside the door? I guess I was looking like towards like the wall and the door. Which wall? Uh, it's a wall. The, the door's right here, and it's a wall right here. It's like a like an entrance right here. Here's the door. It's a wall right here. Let's talk about your conversation with Sergeant Rangel. You had mentioned that uh, he was trying to talk to you, but you couldn't hear him. Did that exchange that you had with him? Yes, sir. Okay. You told him that you had a hostage in there, didn't you? Didn't you say that? No, sir.
Uh, I, like I said, I think I, w I was going to be uh, singing in the closet or something. I was trying to get in the closet. I don't know if I say in the closet, out of the closet. Uh, I remember I was looking for my phone. I'm sorry. I remember I was looking for my phone, so I uh, called somebody. You're looking for your phone, but you're screaming at her. Give me the banging. You said the banging? You said, just said that you were looking for the phone, but we hear you very clearly screaming to her, give me the baby, and you testified to that. You, you were saying, give me the baby. We hear you saying that, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, 
we can work this out, man. Trust me. You killed both of these women that day, didn't you? I did, but not intentionally, sir. Call the 50, Your name is Mr. Hernandez. Mr. you have uh, 
just gotten off the witness stand following both direct and cross-examination by the state. And we understand that at this point in time, we have an opportunity if we wish to call any of the fact witnesses regarding this offense. We are allowed to do so at this time. You and I have discussed that as we have on several occasions. And you have instructed me that at this time you uh, wish for us to uh, rest the case, which I assume, the, unless the state calls any rebuttal, I assume that they would close their case, we would close our case, and then the uh, next step in this trial would be closing arguments, and the jury would make the decision in this case based upon the totality of the evidence that they have before them at this time. You understand that? Okay. And that's what you're instructing us to do now. Is that correct? Here, that's all I have. We'll, we'll be racing in front of the jury, and I don't know if the state has to vote or not. We're going to close, All right. Okay, that's when the jury